Greetings, I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. My lecture today is Christ, the Black Buddhist Secret. Not only was Jesus black, he was black and Buddhist. Please understand that in order to promote white supremacy, white races had to write black people out of Buddhist history. In order to hide black Buddhist history, white races rewrote history and they made Jesus white. The secret story of black Buddhist Jesus are the black Madonnas. Do not take my word for it. Just Google the black Madonnas and ask the question, why is it that people all over Europe, white people, have images of the black Mother Mary and the black baby Jesus? The facts and history of the Christian religion and its black roots connection is not some wild idea or concept proposed by Anthony M. Elmore. We learn our facts from the famed 18th century British historian, archaeologist, and scientist Sir Godfrey Higgins who wrote about this in his book titled The Anna Eclipse. The time has now arrived when it becomes proper to enter upon the examination of the doctrines of the celebrated Buddha of India, which were the foundations of all the mysticism of the Western nations, as well as those which have which have seen of Krishna, and from these two were supplied the superstitions which became engrafted into the religion of Jesus Christ. White people, black religious leaders, Asian Buddhist teachers, all keep Buddha out of Africa and none of them would teach or share the history and culture of Buddhism in Africa. This is the point when you can connect Buddha in Africa is when you can connect black Buddhist history with Christian history. And in quote, quote, upon his return to Greece, they gathered around and asked, tell us about the great land of blacks called Ethiopia. And I wanted to say, quote, there are two great Ethiopian nations. One is Sin, India, and the other is Egypt. That's from Dorius, Greek historian, 100 B.C. Herodotus writes about India, quote, All the tribes I mentioned, their skin are much the same color, much like the Ethiopians. Now this is from the history of Herodotus. Now, this is what British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about Herodotus and Buddhists. Herodotus speaks of Nero, as the cradle of the gymnosophists or Buddhists. Higgins write, quote, We see here that the followers of Buddha are called gymnosophists. It has been observed that the Nero of Ethiopia was Nero. This is confirmed by the observation of Heliodorus that the priests of Nero were of a humane character and were called Gymnosophists. This humane character that he's talking about is the Christian of the brotherly love of the Buddhists. Now, when we come to Herodotus, we are over 400 years before the world ever heard of, a, of the religions called Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We at this point, based on Herodotus, learned that there were two Ethiopians. Now, 
let us connect the two Ethiopians, India and Africa with, with a people and a history. Before there was ever a white man to describe a black man as Ethiopian, there were black people who named themselves and they were called Kush or Kushites. Now, the kingdom of Kush was an ancient kingdom in Nubia located at the confluence of the Blue Nile, the White Nile and River Abara in what is now Sudan and South Sudan. We are at 400 BC and the Greek historian Herodotus writes that Nero was the cradle of the gymnast office of Buddhists. Now, how do we connect the Buddhists from India to Nubians in Africa? Exactly who were the Nubians? Now, the term Kushite is a general term that refers to Nubians, Sutra, Neotes, Egyptians, Anu, Canaanites, and afro samarian rulers of Mesopotamia. See, linguistic and archaeological evidence suggests that the Dravidian pre-scribes held to a religion that reflects proto saharian beliefs and practices. Now, let's go back to the Greeks. Now, there was an Afro-Greek writer named Homer who alluded to the diversity and unity of the Kushite empires when he wrote, quote, a race divided when the sloping rays, the rising and setting of the sun rays before Homer's time in the 8th century BC, there was a time but a vast dimension, dominion that stretched from West Africa to India and it was dominated by rulers and priests who were ethnically Kushite. Now, this is what you must understand about the Buddhist religion. Early Buddhist practitioners, the Buddhist or Kushites. They are different names for the same people in India. They are known as Dravidian. Now, the Dravidian and the Nubian are the same people. All these people were Afro-Asian and they spoke the same language. Let me give you a point in history. The Kushites ruled the world, and in Japan they were called the Anu, or the original people of Japan. They were in China, they were in Asia, they were all over the world. Now, these Japanese who teach us Nietzsche and Buddhism are not going to teach black people that the original people of Japan were Kushite, or the black Anu. The one thing that whites Asians and blacks who are trained by white people make sure that black people do not learn is about the Buddhist religion. Is the fact that Buddhism from India and the Nubians of Kushites in Africa are one and the same people who spoke the same language. When Herodotus visited Nubia or the capital of Kush, he wrote that Nero was the cradle of the gymnosophists or the Buddhists. Now, the foundation of what later became the Christian Bible came from the Buddhists as revealed by Godfrey Higgins in his 1836 book, The Anacopsis. Before there was ever the thought of a Christian Bible, our ancestors, the black Buddhists, wrote the book of Genesis. What Christians have and the Bible is apocryphal writings. Now, we black Buddhists have archaeological evidence. There is the African Christ, which is the original Christ, 
and there is the Roman Christ, there is clearly a, a history, culture, and African background of the African Christ that has been written out of history. For those of you who would like to know the difference between the African Christ and the Roman Christ, the difference is Abraham, the real, true, conscientious Buddhist must have been an exact prototype of Jesus Christ as I shall prove both in doctrine and practice. Unquote. You see, the real and original Christians in world history were the black Buddhists. For the record, before any white man ever thought of being a Christian, the real and original Christians were black Buddhists. Godfrey Higgins writes, quote, From the origin, for the origin of the cross, we must go to the Buddhist and the Lama of Tibet. In Tibet, this cross is called a de jure. Now, the Af unquote. Now, the African cross of the Anak in ancient Egypt come from came from the Buddhist teachings. The cross in Roman Christianity did not become official until King Constantine of Rome endorsed the cross hundreds of years after the death of Christ. Now, while the cross is the foundation of the Christian religion, the cross in Buddhism symbolized the Buddhist concept of enlightenment. It was the African Christians of Buddhists who came up with the cross. Now, Please note that the word Christ in Buddha means the same thing. The word Jesus represents an individualized level of enlightenment in Christian experience. See, Christ, on the other hand, represents an appetite in the explanation of the quality of enlightenment reached by Jesus. For this reason, in the context of Western mysteries, Jesus represents the perfect mode, the inner workings of the purified substance in the vehicle in which the path of awakening, the level of Christ's consciousness takes place. Now, the word consciousness. Now, in Sirach, Messiah, and in Greek, Christos means the anointed one. As for the word Nazarene, the meaning is, quote, he who reveals what is hidden. Now, as far as the word Messiah, it has two meanings the Christ or the anointed one and the measured one. Unquote. Now, please note that Jesus in Hebrew means redemption and the word Nazara means the truth. Thus, the Nazarene means the truth. Jesus had attained Nazaretha, perfect spiritual enlightenment, and that he also taught this had to others. Hence Jesus and his disciples were Nazarenes or Nazarenians, meaning followers of the mystic path to God or the Purim. The original apostles used the term Jesus the Nazarenean, Messiah, which means Jesus the Nazarenean, the Christ, the anointed one. A tone and enlightenment is one and the same word. Remember, now, his last name is Christ. The first name is Jesus. The middle name is Nazarene. Now, hence, the name Jesus Christ of Nazarene means the anointed one, the giver of truth, 
the bringer and the source of redemption, the revealer of what is hidden, the enlightened one, who has the gift to awaken one. The teachers of Christ and Buddha was originally based on the teachings of enlightenment. Now, if you want to understand the black Buddhist connection to Christian history, then you must get an understanding of the Brahman teachings in India. See, originally, Brahmins were black people in India who opposed or who had distorted views of Buddhist teachings. The Brahmins hated Buddhists so much that when they got into power in India, they destroyed Buddhism and they brought in foreigners in India to destroy the Buddhists. The foreigners that they brought into India to destroy the Buddhists were white people. These white people mixed with the black Indians and they took over the religious teachings of India and they became the new religious teachers in India whose goal was to destroy the Buddhist teachings. I want you to look at these Indian Semites. They are the people in history who we know as Semite people. These Semite people are these people in India who became the Brahmins. These Brahmins created in India the world's first sanctified racism based on skin color called the caste system in India. Now, look at the pictures of the Brahmins in India. These Brahmins would later create a religious paradigm that would not only infect India, the Brahmins rewrote world history and created what we have in the day, the false Brahmin teachings. See, the Brahmins rewrote science and they extricated all black people out. You must know that it is racism the reason we don't know about the black Buddhist history. Just as in the movie Planet of the Apes, it is racism that hides the fact that the Sarawati River civilization was twice as large as Egypt and Mesopotamia combined and we never hear about this great black civilization. Nor are black people told that the original Christians were black Buddhists who lived in ancient Nubia and Egypt. Before Buddhism ever made it to Asia, meaning Korea, China, and Japan, Buddhism had been in Africa for over 1,000 years. Now, by the time Buddhism made it to Asia, it had survived 1,000 years in Africa and had died before it made it to Asia. Most people have no idea that they study and practice Brahman teachings because most black people made a Brahman their father. See, we learn about the Brahman father from the British historian Godfrey Higgins who names and explains the word a Brahman who later became known in history as Abraham, who later became the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, in order to get a clear understanding about the Brahman teachings, Brahman teachings promote a history without science and facts. See, Brahman's teachings are the epitome of apocryphal teachings. Please understand that the goal of Brahman teachings was, was to destroy and rewrite black Buddhist history, and they did a good job. See, the Brahmins are the masters of rewriting history and changing historical dates. There are two names in history that the Brahmins rewrote and changed the story. Now, in ancient literature, the word Hindu is nowhere to be found. There is 
no such thing in white ancient writings as Hindu. The world, the other word you must understand is Judaism. See, the Romans created non-Buddhist religions of Hinduism and Judaism. This is what most people do not understand. White Hinduism and Judaism is the same religion. They use Hinduism and Judaism to destroy the black Buddhist religion. This is what you must understand. Now, the way the Romans rewrote history and wrote black people out of history was through false writings called the Vedas. Now, in the Anaclipses, Volume 1, 396 reads, quote, The Arabian history historians contend that Brahma and Abraham, their ancestor, are the same person. The Persians generally called Abraham, Abraham Zaradus. Cyrus considered the religion of the Jews the same of his own. The Hindus must have come from Abraham or the Israelites from Rome. Now, the word Abraham is derived from the Sanskrit word Brahma. The root of Brahma is Ra, which means to grow or multiply in number. In addition, Lord Brahma the creator, God of Hinduism, is said to be the father of all men and exalted of all gods, for it is from him that all beings were generated. Thus again, we come to the meaning of exalted father. This is a clear pointer that Abraham is none other than the heavenly father, Brahma. The temple of Mecca was founded by a colony of Brahmins from India. It was a sacred place before the time of Muhammad and they were permitted to take pilgrimage to it from several centuries after his time. Its great celebrity as a sacred place long before the time of the prophet cannot be doubted. This is the Anaclipsis, Volume 1, page 421. Now, let us look at the black Buddhists in ancient history in Africa. Please Google the word Haikos. Now, please, we explain that the Kushites ruled the world. In ancient India, they were known as proto dravidians Now, the Haikos were black people from India who conquered Egypt. Although they were from Asia, they were Kushites. They were known also as the Shepherd Kings. What you have is different names for the same people known as Kushites. See, for thousands of years, the Kushites in Africa interacted with their Asian brothers. Let us go back to the time of the son of a Kushite king, Shakyamuni or Siddhartha Buddha. The Buddhists were shepherd kings. Now, this is what British historian Garfield Higgins writes on the matter. Quote, I suppose the shepherd kings who conquered Egypt were the Rajapots or Buddhists of the country of Raja Bidoins or Rajasthan. The Israelites, as well as the royal shepherds, were both, in fact, Arab tribes, tribes also from Arabia on the Indus. From Raja and Pont or Buddha came the name the country of the Rajapunts, or royal Buddhists. From Pont was the name Buddha. The inhabitants of that country were Pali or shepherds. From Punt was the name Buddha. Now, they came from a country called Arabia as they crossed the Western Arabia and route to the Abyssinia, Ethiopia. When forced forwards by succeeding tribes, they, they left behind them to the peninsula 
the name of Eurabia which it still possesses. Unquote. Now, do not take my word for it. If you look at Ethiopians in Africa today, you will see that they look just like the Southern Indians. All you have to do is look at the Ethiopians of the high coast and know that these people were Buddhists. They were called Naga and you see the Egyptians with the snake. Please note, the cobra is indigenous of India, but you see the cobra in Africa. Shaka Muni Buddha was called the Lion of the Shakas. And when you look at the Buddhist temples in Asia, you see the lion. The lion comes from Africa, not Asia. Look at Roman history of the Bible. We find absolutely no archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science of the Bible history, but we find archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science of the Black Buddhist connection to Christian history. This is what British historian Godfrey Higgins writes about Nubia or Nubians. He says, Mr. Franklin says, quote, another striking instance is recorded by the very intelligent traveler Wilson regarding a representation of the fall of our first parents, sculptured in the magnificent temple of Istanbul in Nubia. He says that a very exact representation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is to be seen in that cave and that the serpent climbing the tree is especially delineated and the whole subject of tempting of our first parents most accurately exhibited. How is the fact of the mythos of the second book of Genesis being found in Nubia, probably a thousand miles above Holophius, to the ancients to be accounted for, except that it came from Upper Egypt with the first Buddhist or Gymnosophist, unquote. You see, there is a total different interpretation of the Buddhist interpretation of the book of Genesis and that the way it is interpreted in Buddhism. Now, we have archaeological, anthropological, literary science, genetic science that not, not only that Buddhists came from India to Africa, we connect black Buddhists to Christian history. Before there was ever any white person who called themselves Christians, black Buddhists were not only Christian, white people were worshiping the black God and his mother. Let us look at what British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins writes about this matter. Quote, in book 152, the same work de abstinia porphyry informs us that the very that in very old times the sacrificing of indeed the use of flesh of animals was not practiced either by the Athenians or the Syrians. The Syrians that is the natives of the ancient city of Ona and the Palestinian the Iolans, of whom I shall speak presently, advancing still eastwards, we find porphyry giving an account of the Magi from Ebolos, who wrote that their history in which he states that the first and the most learned class of the Magi neither eat nor slay any thing animated, but adhere to the ancient abstinence from animals. 
after this he goes to the gymnosophists called San Medians and the Romans of India whom he gives an account and from which it appears that they have very very little from what they were in his time but all these actions seem to show signs of the first black Buddhist people as either no animal food of the black Chilaski or Iranians coming to Italy and bringing the black god and his mother along with them. They not only brought the black god and his mother, but they brought his house of Loreto, as I shall show in its proper place. Unquote. Hundreds of years before there was ever a religion that was officially called Christian, white people and people over the world practiced the religion of the black God and his mother. You see pictures all over the world of the black God and his mother. It was only in 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea that King Constantine made the religion official. Now what he did was he added the God of England or Britain called Jesus to the name and then they added the name from the Krishnas. See, the Krishnas was another set of Buddhists. And they officially called the religion of the new god, Jesus Krishna. However, the religion of the black god and his mother was all over Europe. At this time, we had the Kushan Empire, but the Kushan, or the Kush Empire rather, had changed its name to Abyssinia because it changed to become Christian. Now, what I want you to understand that in the Bible, how we know about the Buddhists is the word Samaritan. See, in the Bible, that was the good Samaritans. In the story of Christ, British historian Godfrey Higgins spells Samaritan, or he writes the Samaritans were the gymnasts of his Buddhists. Now, the word Samaritan means Buddha or Buddhist people. The Buddhists or Hasid people brought their religion or Christ or Buddha into Italy. When you see the Catholic Church, the black Madonna you are looking at is the Buddha and his mother, Maya. Higgins also writes, quote, We see here that the followers of Buddha are called Gymnosophists. It is observed that Miro of Ethiopia was Miru. This is confirmed by an observation of Heliodorus the priests of Nero were of a humane character and were called gymnosophists. This is what white people do not tell black people. For hundreds of years, white people in Europe practiced the religion of the Buddha all over Europe. White people practiced Buddhism and you would see whites honoring the black baby child, Buddha, and his mom. I beg my viewers to stop and think for a moment. How is it that we find all over Europe the image of a black god and his mother? Just Google the black Madonna and try to find out why we have the black Madonna. When you research such things, like the Da Vinci Code idea, is conjured that it is somehow connected to forbidden secrets of Mary Magdalene. See, 
Ladies and gentlemen, there is a secret regard in the Christian religion. And the secret is, quote, the black Buddhist connection to Christian history. These secrets have been unraveled hundreds of years ago by British historian Sir Godfrey Higgins. Again, I repeat what he writes, quote, but all these accounts seem to show signs of the first black Buddhist people as either no animal food or the black P. Agassi or Arnanians as come to Italy and bring the black god and his mother along with them. And they not only brought the black god and his mother, they brought his house of Loreto. Unquote. You see, it is time that I bring this lecture, the original Christians were black Buddhists to a close. The first archaeological evidence of Jesus happened in the second century with the Kushan king Kanishka. Now please understand that King Kanishka was a Kushan king who had ruled Afghanistan. Now he conquered India. Now for hundreds of years the Greeks had introduced or had adopted the Buddhist religion. Now, when he conquered India, he changed the Buddha from black to white, and he created the beginnings of the Christian religion, and that in the second century AD, he created what is called the Ganhara images. And when you look at these images, for example, you see one of the mother uh, of the baby being bathed, or uh, you see the ten disciples, I mean sorry, the twelve disciples, you see Buddha had twelve disciples, Jesus had twelve disciples. What they did was they took those pictures of the Greek-like images of Buddhists, and that is your foundation of the Christian religion. In fact, the first evidence of the Christian religion is on a Kanishka coin. On one side of the coin, you have Buddha, and the other side of the coin, we have Jesus. Now, you see, although we can show black Buddhist association with white people before the time of Alexander, please view the images of Alexander the Great with Buddhists. See, the ancient Greeks before Alexander was associated with black Buddhists. There was a black man who was Socrates. He was a Gnostic or a Buddhist. Socrates taught Plato. Plato taught Aristotle. Aristotle taught Alexander the Great. Before there was ever an idea of a Jesus Christ, Greeks practiced Buddhism. What I want you to do, this is evidence of this, just Google the word greco Bactrian Kingdom. Let me be clear. The world's first missionary religion was Buddhism. It was the black Buddhist king of Soko who peacefully spread it, the Buddhist religion around the world. That is evidence of what King of Soko did. It got into Africa and it got all over to certain European countries. Now, let's get to this. Abraham represented the Hindu Roman Jews. Now what you must understand is that Judaism was not a monolithic religion. The, the Jewish religion, everybody was not the same. For example, the, the Jews, there was a tribe of Jews who came to Africa from India hundreds of years before the other Jews. This tribe of Jews were called the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is the same tribe as the Buddha. In fact, the Buddha, Shakyamuni, was called the Lion of the Shakas. Whenever you see the tribe of Judah, you are going to see the Lion because the Lion represented the Buddhists. When you see the Ahsoka Etic, 
which we're going to show you the Ahsoka edict. You see the lines on the throne because they represented the tribe of Judah. You can see this at the Alpha Dembach Temple in Africa. You see the you see the Naga, which the rulers were Nagas or the cobra snake coming out of the lotus flower and you see that beautiful throne this is in africa now what happened was that the people all over europe later came to accept the buddhist religion now it is only the proud black buddhists who teach the true history that the original christ were black and buddhists when you challenge, you go to the second century AD where the Kushan king changed the Buddha from black to white. This is when all of this happened. Now, all one has to do is look at the Ganhara carvings of the Buddhists and you will see the first foundation of the Christian religion whereas Christians were moved from black to white. Now, what I want all the experts to explain to me is why we find the black Buddhist god and his mother all over Europe. King Constantine sanctioned the Christian religion at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. The name again was Jesus Krishna or Jesus Christ became officially the name of the religion but before it was the Christian religion this religion was all over Europe now the story of Jesus and Buddha is the same story and the same God the story of the birth death and resurrection come from the new religion that King Kanishka and Ashwagosha created called Mahayana Buddhism all the story, the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Christ comes from Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism was started by King Kanishka. Now, let us deal with Buddhism in Asia hundreds of years before Buddhism arrived in Asia. I mean, in China, in Japan, in Tibet. See, Buddhism became Christianity before these religions even got to Asia. Now, let me tell you how Christianity happened. You see, Christianity started with a group of Buddhists. They were not called Buddhists, but they were called Essenes. Now, the Essenes were a set of second temple Judaism that flourished in the second century BC. To the first century. The Essenes lived in various cities but congregated in a communal life dedicated to ascetism. Some groups practiced celibacy, they volunteered poverty and daily immersions. The Essenes again were the Buddhists. Now we move to the Hebrew king Alexander Janaeus. He was the king of the Hebrew king of Janaeus from 103 to 76 BCE. He was an Essene or a Buddhist. How do we know? Because he left a Buddhist coin. Now, the Buddhist coin shows the Dharma wheel. This shows that he was a Buddhist. Now, what happened was he got into a fight with the Brahmins. Now, the Brahmins were called the Pharisees and the seducers. Now, he got into a big fight. There was a big major war and Alexander Janelles disappeared, the Essenes disappeared, and we never heard any more from them until about 1940 or 46. And they found some scrolls in a cave near the Dead Sea. And these were the Dead Sea scrolls. Now, in regards to black people worldwide, white people literally wrote black people out of history. Most white people are not going to tell black people that the original Christian God was black and Buddhist. 
Just ask white people and any scholarly Negro why you find the black God and his mother in European nations revered to this day. Now, let's bring this lecture to a close. Now, we told you that was the great Kush Empire of Moro. Now, what happened was there was another group of black people who conquered the Kush Empire. Now, see, the black Nubian Empire lasted until it was captured and burned to the ground in the 4th century AD by Ezana of Axum. That's from 320 to 360 the Christian era. It's located in present day Atrechia, northern Ethiopia, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, northern Somalia, Djibouti, northern Sudan, and southern Egypt. King Izana, he was trained by some shipwrecked Christians from Syria, and he grew up in Ethiopia, but what he did was he changed the religion from Buddhism to the Christian religion. This is how it happened in Ethiopia. What we know today as Christianity is simply Greek style Buddhism. The original Christians were black Buddhists and the original Christians was Buddhists. That is us, proud black Buddhists. I am Anthony Al Elmore, President and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Giving you a lecture, Christ, the Black Buddhist Secret. I am Anthony Alpha Elmore.